you know, I got to ask, you are, you're a sniper, mm -hmm. which means every kill is intimate. I mean, you were once a machine gunner, and you can, and I'm sure you're just hitting people, uh -huh. but it's a whole other, I got to imagine anyway, mm -hmm. it's a whole other feeling when you're looking through that scope and you see the face, mm -hmm. um, you, you, you know this person is alive and within the next few seconds, no more. Oh, yeah. They're done. Mm -hmm. What is it? What what is it like for you? Is is the intimacy of shooting through that scope? Is that a a, a, a feeling that brings you more gratitude in the moment? Or, or, or is it the is it the machine gun, where I can shoot and I know I hit the target, but I don't have to live with the fact that I saw this person up close and personal, and then saw what I did to their body. Oh yeah, it's way more intimate as a sniper. I think it was for me more gratif gratifying, um, looking through the scope, but. With that, it, it carried way more emotion too, uh, a roller coaster of emotion. So, like the excitement I would get looking through a scope at someone, knowing I'm about to get this shot, do my job, the job of a sniper, what snipers dream to do. It, it's what snipers are meant to do, you know, looking through the scope and getting that dream shot. I had that rush. And then after taking the shot, it was like a, like a, a downhill roller coaster ride of because you know, because you know that that one bullet ended this guy and he had no idea. He wasn't even expecting it. Sometimes they're just, you know, have yeah, nine times out of 10, you have no idea what's about to happen. They had no idea. Um, so I would feel a certain way about that. The rush and the downside of it, I think that's what made being a sniper good to me, I guess. I hated the, the the bad side of it, of the remorse that I would feel, but I really did enjoy the the hunt. I liked the hunt and the intimacy of not existing to that individual. Like they have no idea you're there, but it just lights out. I enjoyed that to a degree, that was satisfying. But like I said, there's a equal downside to that of feeling bad a little bit, you know? Not feeling, you know, I never like was extremely happy about killing anyone as a sniper. I would always feel a downside to it, a remorseful side, like an emptiness. Um, yeah, like a slight, like a, like an emptiness. Every time you kill someone, I believe it's like a piece of your soul gets ripped ripped apart or ripped off. That's what it feels like. It feels like a part of you gets gone too. You know, I know you guys' motto is without warning, without remorse. Mm -hmm. You made it perfectly clear that many of these people, they had no idea that it was coming. Mm -hmm. They like literally they're walking around and it's lights out. Mm -hmm. But the second part of, of that model, without remorse, that doesn't ring true for you. Not for me. And I've always felt that way. Um, yeah, I, I would always feel remorse after the fact. I would feel sad. I wouldn't feel whole, like joyful. They need snipers to be that way. And that's why they have that model, that creed, um, because they want you to live that life. They want you to be that way. Um, do I think guys genuinely carry that creed out to the T? I don't, I don't think so. Especially like, yeah, when, when you know you got a good kill and, and it's your kill, I, I, I guarantee not everyone after you take care of it, you're just on with your day. It's hard to, it, it really is hard to, when you're looking at someone like that up close and 
you end them, like there's no way not to feel something because you invested, for me, I invested time to essentially get to know that person. Even if it's just for a brief moment, I'm examining their their face feature, the facial features, their, their hands. I can see the wrinkles in the old man's hands or something like that. Like you be, you learn that person. For a moment, it's your friend. For a moment, it's just you and him, you know? There's no hate there. It's just I have a job. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna kill this person, but for that brief second, it's as close as two people can become, you know, just you and him right before you end him. And once you do end him, you, there's that emptiness, there's that void of it's like when you have a big uh your mom or your dad or your family or a best friend comes to see you and stays for the weekend or stays for the week. And it's a great time. And when they leave that remainder of that day, it feels like, oh man, just empty. Like you're, I don't know. It feels like that. So being a sniper for me was a lot like that too. For that brief moment, we're friends where we know each other, you know? And then when I kill that person, it's like, they're gone now, but just permanently forever. And they don't even know why. I think I know why. And it's just, yeah, it's a weird emotion to go through. That remorseful, it, it's a weird remorseful feeling, you know, that I experience. I'm sure a lot of guys do too. It's not just me, but I'm more open about it. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure whether they would like to admit it or not, you know, I, I got to believe all of those guys feel that way in mm -hmm. some way, shape or form. They're, oh, yeah. they're human beings. You know, you spoke earlier and you said you were in a firefight mm -hmm. and um, you were ready to just give up. You know, at one point you were thinking about standing up and just get your head blown off, but you wanted to have an open casket. At another point you were thinking, you know what, I'll just put my hand up and get shot in my hand, but what if the bullet travels through my body and hits a, an artery? Mm -hmm. had you ever taken some soldiers out and one of them just one or even more just said yo I know you got the drop on me mm -hmm. like I just watched what you did mm -hmm. you know I I I I submit and, yeah. and just give you a clean shot oh yeah it's happened uh one really good occasion um some Taliban commanders and and uh, it was Helmand Province. Uh, no, it was uh, Marja, a place called Marja. Um, really violent area in Helmand Province. And there were six Taliban commanders, like high-end leaders, wrong place, wrong time. They should have never like uh, had that meeting that day or whatever they were doing, but they were all together, which is like a, a not a good thing to do. Um, me and my spotter started engaging those guys and we worked from the outsides on, on our way in. And by the time I got to the first two we shot, like they didn't know what was happening. Then as we started to work in, uh, they would try to find a place to, but they were like on a small narrow uh, roadway and to the sides where it's what we call like a bazaar. It's a uh, like an outdoor shopping flea market almost. Um, they're called bazaars. It's like a, a, a shopping town, shopping center. And they couldn't move from this side to that side. It's all blocked off. And they couldn't move to the opposite the other side. It was all blocked off. It was just a narrow one, runway or roadway. So as we're picking the guys off, um, the ones that did, did try to flee away, they hit behind a car, um, end up killing him. Um, another guy kind of tried to lay down off the edge of the road. And it was just, uh, there's nowhere to hide. So by the time we got to the last guy, he set down his rifle and put his hands his head in his hands and squatted down and looked at the direction he believed we were shooting from. And like, he just, he didn't care. He just gave up and he just stayed there and looked. And that's when I pulled the trigger and, and sent it through him. Um, that was my most like vivid time where I've seen the guy just not care anymore. All his friends died and he, he, you know, kind of submitted. Um, that's like the most vivid I can think of. Do you remember other where times shot we shot at people? What's that? Do you remember where you shot him? Because because oh, yeah, he's right. now submitting. 
do, do, do you take it? Do, do you take it easy on him? Does he get a chest shot? Does he get a head shot? What, oh, everybody! What I always try to do a, ch a chest shot, uh, straight to the heart. That was what I my preferred. It's only, I guess, three three occasions or three times I shot someone in the head. It was because three guys were on a rooftop, and that's all I could shoot. And I shot someone else in the head. Um, but yeah, it's less than five times I've I've intentionally aimed at someone's head. Everything else was always to the body. So uh, he was no different, but square in the chest and at the distance we were shooting at, like he didn't, it wasn't, it was quick, you know? And, and is there a reason why you chose the chest as opposed to the head? Just more surface area. And uh, it, it doesn't move around as much. You know, if I look this way or look that way, our, um, it's, it's a wider portion of target to hit. And, you know, the bullets we're shooting, you can hit them in the, you know, I'm not, I don't have to just hit the heart. As long as I hit you in the torso area, if you don't die, you'll at least go down. And that's where I get the second shot, you know, second or third shot. You know, I've had to shoot people three times on occasion um, because of the first two just didn't end them. So, yeah, three shots was like the most I've ever had to put <laughs> a sniper around in, in, in someone's body. Got you. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.